It's the What Did He Said show. I know y'all wondering, is What Did He Said recording? What's going on? Are we back? We're back. <laughs> We're back <laughs> on What Did He Said. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What Did He Said. Let me tell you why, though. Let me tell you why. Okay. RPT. What do you need? Move that out of the way. Sorry. RPT, Red Pill Tamales. Uh, we were doing a public episode and then a private episode. Now, it's all going to be private. So, Red Pill Tamales, strictly for the patrons, strictly for the Patreon. That way, we could really let loose because I was having to, like, tap dance and hold back and, and not really being able to go all the way out on certain topics, you know? Yeah, so just to get you guys up to date. So, Chingo got his other YouTube back, and it's got, like... A bunch of followers and so we're needing to create more content and like uh more hours more to watch hours and stuff so we were like dude why don't you just revive what did he said all your are your archives are back for what did he said let's just go harder on what did he said so let's bring that back and just do what we do and then you know keep everything else separate one of the best things about getting my old channel back after what four or five years in the in the <laughs> youtube five, yada, now, fool. It's five, five years in the <laughs> in the youtube in the digital gulags big don um one of the best things is like stuff that i was just like well it's gone like that music video that short film that video of me and my kids and now it's like you got that little archive back um people used to always ask about this one voiceover a magic mesh it was like a infomercial uh-huh. a lot a bunch of people were like yo i'm trying to show people the magic mesh and we came to see you and i was trying to show them and i was like oh, i think it was on my old channel so and then there was the masa and the power people were always asking about that all of them are in there yeah i i it's on a playlist yeah all i gotta look up all the playlist stuff and i just like i think i need to make a new playlist and just kind of like simplify it so we can everybody can just go to the things that they liked and then we bring in all the new stuff find what you need um but speaking of new stuff man i just got back from california man yeah and you're still i feel feel like (laughs) i feel like i'm slowly starting to recover um Maybe I just got spoiled, man. I was just home in any type of gig I did have. I was able to drive like yeah. New Braunfels and Fort Worth and stuff like that. Corpus. But um, yeah, it, it kind of beat me up a little bit because as soon as I landed straight to the Adam Carolla show. Um, what, what are all the podcasts you did? You man, did a bunch of podcasts. You were, I, you were all over. So California. day one, <laughs> I, it makes you appreciate your rest. Like by yeah. the time I actually checked into the hotel, I was just like. I remember I like think it crossing was like, the finish line. I think it was like three weeks ago. I told you, hey man, I know. Hey, your shows are coming up. Hey, remember that one time you, you, when you were going to Odessa and then you went to the? Yeah. I said, you remember you like? Yeah. Oh yeah, I need to sleep. I was like, you need to do that again, dude. You haven't been on the road, and it just well, we did so much. <laughs> not to mention, not to mention that uh, we were working hard, like long hours, uh, three days leading up, leading up to that trip. So it was just all compiling yeah but uh as soon as i landed adam carolla after that went to uh, american cholo he's got a real nice studio uh it's really come along uh hopped on his show and then after that i think i had to rush to the venue Mm -hmm. beat that traffic because uh me and american cholo are filming and i'm looking at the clock and i was like hey uh 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 am i gonna be able to make it you know what i mean like i do have a show yeah they're like now you're good you're just gonna be stuck in traffic but you'll make it (laughs) <laughs> and uh, uh Brea was a great crowd of course you know they 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 let me know like yo where was Theo Juve we thought we thought Theo Juve was gonna be there I uh, brought my boy Any Means up to do a song and they were like oh we thought that was the time you were gonna go turn yeah, into Juve yeah, yeah. and I was like who is a whole nother person bro I don't turn into nobody <laughs> you know Juve yeah. was dehydrated and tired from too many clientas or something. Yeah, you would think Chingo and Theo Hoover are twins because they look so similar, bro. But Chingo don't got the locks. I told he him, too. He got the locks, bro. No, my locks are gone. And I told him, <laughs> I was like, bro, I think the people, they want to see you, bro. And he was like, nah, man, I'm tired. Yeah, he like he wasted a lot of energy and a lot of juices and fluid on, uh, <laughs> on the, the flight, high. dog. That mile high club <laughs> is no joke. That altitude, dog, hey, <laughs> hey it takes <laughs> it out of you, dude. No manches, bro. <laughs> Just juices. Oh, and then after the Brea show, which I was still like on this adrenaline rush, bro. Like I had a really good time. Um, it was it was a fun green room. We had Martin Rizzo, George Wang, Oscar Miranda, a whole bunch of people. 
How is that? How is that green room? Is it like a uh, Oklahoma City's? No, or, it's they don't. It's not like arcades and and weed and stuff like that. Oklahoma it, City has that has that candy table, dog. That fucking they get you on that crack. Dog. It's like a coffee table and it's like Reese's. Yeah, it's like every candy imaginable. It's like the big ones too, not like the little the little the little Halloween ones, the big ones. Yeah, um, yeah, hey, man, that place. El one pound okay, Hershey, dog. el one pound Hershey <laughs> carnal. Yeah, um, that shit's shit real. But it, but but right after the Brea show. And now I, I was going to go do Willie Barcena's uh, show, podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that was like, I'm on my way, bro. I, I just got to, you know what I'm saying? I got to clock out. I'm at work. You know what I mean? We still got to do the merch and all this other stuff. And uh, so, yeah, Willie was um, very nice to stay up late, wait on me. So that was fun. Yeah, that was that is cool. I like I like Willie. I like, I like Willie a lot. Yeah. Uh, that one time he did the show in McAllen. That was cool. Mm-hmm. They tried to play a joke on me after that show. It was uh, I, I did the I did the stage and I went to the back, and they had I was I walked in everybody was quiet and I was like, damn, dude, did I go over my time? Like, was it a, like a minute over or something? And I everybody was just quiet, not even looking at me. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on, dude? Mm-hmm. And then like it took them a minute, and I'm just like sitting there like, hey, did I go over my time? And they're like, nah, we got you. Yeah. I was like, what? Like what? Make it like they're trying to make it like oh, like I bombed or something. Oh, like, okay. Come on, bro. We did, I did not bomb. They're <laughs> like they were like, no, you did really good, dude. Like we just did. We, we just want to fuck it with you. I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, you know, dude, uh, that particular day, it sucks that we had to like haul ass and leave, and I, we didn't. I didn't get. We didn't get to see uh, Willie set that night, but I really wanted to see him work. And then, um, so Bray was a success. Did all those podcasts. Next day. I think I think that's the day that I woke up. I set my alarm for like five five thirty a.m. California time because I wanted to say good morning to Penny and the girls like on the way to school because Daddy been working. So I'm like, <laughs> I gotta get up. You know what yeah. I mean? Because they're at school, and then you forget with the with the time thing. Mm-hmm. By the time you're like, all right, here's a good little break time. I'm having dinner. Let me check in, and it's like they're in bed, bro. Like, look at what time it is over here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the next day it was an off day, but uh, man, it's a blur. Yeah, you still still had did a bunch of podcasts, and, and then you went to some places to eat. I think Hoodstocks. Yeah, I, I, I met up with a Jesse Olguin. Yeah. For those of y'all that don't know, Chingo's a Chingo's a big foodie. He's a, he he knows his food, dog. Well, I mean, I, I'm, a few cities I, I'm we greedy. go to, you just know. Hey, we're gonna go to here. I eat a lot. Yeah, and you just know the spots. Like, I like to eat every place. I remember I when like we went to, to Florida, you, you took me to that Cuban, the Cuban oh, yeah, spot yeah. and some other places. Shout out, yeah, to uh, DJ Pat Pat. That's her family's place. I just love Cuban food and Cuban coffee and, mm-hmm. and then lo- what the locals eat, stuff like that. But, hey, one of the highlights food-wise of yeah. the entire trip, one of the entire highlights was when we were recording um, Hoodstock's podcast. Yeah. Uh, my buddy Angel, him and his family, they own um, a place called Tres Cochinitos in Wilmington, right? So yeah, I guess it's like um, uh, chicharron, uh, carne de puerco, like fried Ooh. pork, carnitas. Yeah, the good, it's carnitas. The good stuff. Yeah, the I don't good know if they're stuff. from like Michoacan and all that, but I'm, I'm, I, I imagine they use the uh, copper tin things and they're, they they fry it all the way down in its own fat. But anyway. Is it like is it as good as like El Luchador, the El Luchador place? The one in uh, Ramsey's? Yeah, the Ramsey's place. This was this was something very specific and oh, different. Damn. So so check it out. So so Angel from Los Tres Cochinitos, he showed up with this like pan, like a tray of um, I think he calls them green chili fries, but it's basically like French fries. I believe there was some cheese mixed in there, but it was like the chunks of the pork uh, and the green sauce damn. and just like the flavors, bro. Just all of it like like i know carne asada fries was like a huge trend in the west coast like specifically socal that was like a huge trend this reminds me of it i guess but bro it was like everybody in that studio was just like tearing it up like garbage fries type of thing like where it's just like all the like everything mixed in all mixed in yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. would you say garbage yeah it's like garbage fries almost like nachos oh is that what they call that garbage fries yeah i've seen a lot of them like okay well well that's great that sounds crazy with the pork and because the fries so even though it had it was like cold by the time i ate it yeah yeah. it was still good because the fries didn't really get dry because you got that green salsa all up in there yeah so everybody was like, bro, what the hell? This is crack, bro. Like, how do you make this? How'd you come up with this? 
he said his son was uh craving some um like tommy's chili fries or something like that and uh he's like well i mean we got fries here but i can put some green chili and you know i can throw some of this some of that and just kept piling on until it was like perfect (laughs) and and he said too he's like dude i did 10 years like penitentiary he's like i'm real creative when it comes to oh yeah yeah yeah, dude you gotta be (laughs) like i had a friend that used to be in the penitentiary and like every time he came out he's like oh bro i'm gonna make you a spread dog and i was like I mean, we have human food yeah, yeah, now, yeah, bro. Yeah. Like, we, we, I, could just, I could make, I could make you some. I, you want to stay? Yeah, like, like, no, nah, bro. Them. Like, you ain't had the the ramen with some of the like, bro. You get the you get the ramen. You get the you get. The, oh, you need to get some of those. What are those diced the uh, the diced? Uh, what do you call it? How uh, do you say ramen? It reminds me of something that uh, el de la barbacoa gordo makes. Yeah, something you like be that. putting ramen in a yeah, lot of they, stuff. They use ramen and stuff. They use like that Fritos. They have. Uh, and then he'll put like he his thing was like he really loved those diced uh, pickles the the ones that, the relish and stuff that you put in it you put all that in there you put some I forgot what it was it's been like it's been like ten years already what do you make the the spread he would make a spread that's what they call it in prison but how, what was it it was just a it's mush a mush of like all kinds of shit and it's just like break it all up and it's uh, it was ramen heavy or like a base type of like like Fritos he crushed and things shit. up like, and like reshape yeah, put it, it in there and then mix it and stuff. And, cheese oh the 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 spray cheese the the whiz cheese huh. put that in there too and i'm just like dude so he went to the grocery store bought all those ing- ingredients <laughs> yeah like bro. commissary ingredients yeah so when you think homemade food he's thinking prison homemade food like. how much time did he do bro <laughs> he, Golly. Did, he did about 14 15 years Oh yeah, shit. so he was like, bro, it's oh, that is, yeah, gonna, that hey, is hey bro, hey, you fucking try it, this. <laughs> you call it institutionalized? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, that's a long time. Yeah, to the point where it was shit. like he was going to community college, and uh, I, I was helping him like get all this stuff straight. So even when he was talking to somebody like this, he's just real aggressive the way he talks. So like he's at the administration. Hey, like, con todo respeto. <laughs> like, bro, like to went, check in. He went up to the window and he's like. What do you mean my class was dropped? What do you mean? And I was like, bro, bro, calm down. He's it like, happens. I am calm. No, this is calm. I'm, I'm talking to him. And I was yeah. like, I'm I talking know, calm. but you're a big guy. And this little girl years. looks like she's like, oh, my God. Like, just you, chill, bro. You look like you did 15. I am chill. I was like, let me let me talk to her. Let me talk to her just because you can't. Like, this is too much. Like, this isn't even aggressive, dude. This isn't even aggressive. And I was like, God damn. I wanted this class. <laughs> To throw off my elective yeah and dude and he's like i don't like, i'm not gonna graduate at this rate i'll never graduate on time bro <laughs> that's that's yeah he's like that's dude i this is what i used the financial aid for yeah. like he's just as, getting on as it. much as tuition we pay bro yeah oh wow <laughs> and i was like bro you need to chill and it took him it took him a while to start like oh down. i see what i okay i see that was a little okay got it got it oh, okay because so. people were afraid to tell him i was the only one i was telling him because i was like bro Fucking relax. Nobody's gonna tell him to relax, but I'm like, we're yeah. cool. It, dude, it's too much, bro. It's too much. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's crazy. Yeah, like like uh, my homie Annie means <clears throat> who raps, <clears throat> but um, he's done a bunch of those comedy shows with me where he'll come up and do a song type thing, talk to the couples. But he's got like head tats. He's tatted up like crazy. So uh, like we'll all be chilling in the green room, and when the sound guy or whoever like say it's just me, him and his brother, or me, him and another rapper. And the sound guy's like, oh, okay, how, how much time is everybody doing? And I was just like, uh, well, they already did time, but <laughs> 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 like, these ain't comedians. These these my hitters. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, my, oh, well, you, you got to have your hitters. It's my entourage. Yeah. It's my entourage. Instead of the mom entourage. The mom entourage. You got the real entourage now. Yeah, it was a it was a, a busy, it was a cool trip, man. Um, you do any more podcasts after that? So you did the, uh, that was the middle day and then you had the, the flappers, the day flappers. Did you do? I want, man, dude, it's, it's starting to become a blur. Um, no, I think that day I was able to kind of like go over my notes, like, like go for a walk, get something to eat, like kind of like chill a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, I can't remember if I did any, um, any more podcasts off the top of my head. Yeah, I, I think Chingo. I was scheduled to, and, and it fell through, stuff like that. First thing Chingo said when he got back was like, bro, I didn't have my liquid IV or nothing, dude. Like, I was I was a white guy. belt. I was a white belt. I should have packed a little bit better. But um, like I said, dude, it was so hectic just the days leading up, and Marisol got a bunch of stuff going on. So she really was like, hey, you got it? And I packed... Um, I packed them like orange. I don't know what type of lizard. Them kind, them boots, and he got this big ass spur. Oh yeah. And um, 
after day one, I was like, nah, I'm gonna wear the only other pair of shoes, which are like some little dusty Adidas. Yeah. With my cowboy hat and shit. Uh, they were too distracting. Uh, they were just, it was just, oh, the spur. I could hear the noise of the spur. They're just a little clunky. Is the spur like attached to it? Like it's part of the boot or you could take them off? You'd have to like un, oh. you'd have to have, have it removed. Oh, wow. Yeah. They're like attached to the leather type oh, damn, thing. No, I didn't know that. But, um, I mean, I, could, I need to take all the boots in to get cleaned and, and, uh, like re-moisturized and all that crap pretty soon anyway. But, um. But yeah, it was one of those like, bro, you're a white belt right now. <laughs> like you didn't pack just enough like just supplemental hydration type things. Oh, I just doing like a multi, you know. And then you took out your uh, your Sancho jacket, right? You took out your Sancho jackets to the to the show. Uh huh. How did that? How did that? People liked it. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was a little understaffed. Uh, Juan Perez was not there. <laughs> Juan Perez was not there. Um, so um, get your tickets now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. com, And then also, guys, uh, because so he took some jackets. They sold most of them, but we still have we still have three large jackets left. If it's still on the website, we put it up on the website. So what we're going to start doing is we're going to put the merch on the website. We're going to take them to shows and stuff. Chingo can sign them if you come to the shows and, you know, personalize them for you guys like that. Um, but we'll have them here. So, I mean, whatever, if we have anything left over, like with like the jackets and stuff like that, like some of the, the hot ticket items that you have to get at the shows, if we have a few left, you can go on after the show onto the website and see if they're there and you can try and get them before they're gone. Cause you know, that way everybody that doesn't, that, you know, we don't get to go to the show or that didn't get to go to shows or just, we're not in your city right now. Y'all can try to have a chance to get some of the merch. That's right. Chingo, the merch.com Chingo, the merch.com. <clears throat> and um yeah looking forward to the rest of the tour of course we got houston coming up february 23rd 24th hometown show i'm excited to announce who the big sponsor is um you know my, my family's been texting me like hey we're going like different people uh different people that we know from around the city like yo i already got my ticket stuff like that so yeah man excited about that um check out the website because we're about to add a lot more shows. I think some ticket links just went up. So definitely uh, be on the lookout. Yeah. Another thing, guys, if you guys want to know, like, firsthand information as far as, like, you guys want to text or something with the, uh, like, with the with the shows that are coming up in your city and stuff like that, we have a phone number for you guys. Just take down this phone number, text in your your name, the your city, your email and and we'll take it from there and and so what's going to happen is we're going to put you guys on some of our lists that we have for some of the cities and so anytime that anything comes up we'll we'll email you and give you a text just letting you know what's going on in your city for chingo bling so that you guys are not left out of the loop because sometimes we're on the we're on the podcast and we we have all the the content we're dropping and we still get people that are like hey bro why didn't you tell me fool yeah, hey yeah. bro oh. why, why didn't you let us know so some people that came to the show <clears throat> i think it was it might have been burbank and they're like bro I, I i just i happened to see you on american cholo bro if you hadn't gone on that show i, I wouldn't even know yeah see so so guys <laughs> take this number down it's 210-480-8626 six. just text that number and text us your name your your email and the city you're in all right and then also when we do drops for those cities you know sometimes we'll do some some drops for some tickets some free tickets uh depending on who who all you know who we decide raffles we do and stuff like that so if you guys want to be in the know especially in the cities that are, we're going to we'll get a, we'll get a good estimate of like which cities we're probably going to hit because if we get a lot of people in a lot of those cities that are texting like we have the phone numbers for we'll be like oh we're hitting that place give them the number again 210 yeah, 210-480-8626. 281 480 8626. Yeah, 8626. 210-480-8626. There you go. Okay. Yeah. You can know that number better than me. All right. 210-480. <laughs> and then someone's going to be like, 8004. No. No. Wrong one. <laughs> wrong one. <laughs> Who? Mike Jones. <laughs> That's yeah. the new Mike Jones line right there. So that's what we're going to need, guys. If you guys want to know anything like that, you just let us know and what we'll do we'll even send you the flyers and stuff like that if you guys want to share it out or whatever and uh you know we'll, we'll start doing we'll start getting creative with it we might even do some drop like some some different kind of drops and let y'all know certain things that are dropping at certain times yo so did you uh watch the super bowl 
Uh, no, I saw clips of it highlights. and I kind of went into it. I was I was busy. <laughs> I yeah, was like, yeah. bro, I didn't want to watch all that. Yeah, it's a big investment. Yeah, uh, I definitely saw the first half. Um, we definitely saw the half show. I saw all the memes. <laughs> yeah, I saw the halftime. <laughs> I wanted to see. I was actually like curious. Like I was like, I want to know who's gonna win. Um, my wife was done. Like after Usher done took his shirt off, showed his nipples. <laughs> she was like, Oh yeah, I'm good. I done seen everything I needed to see. After he's getting too close with uh, Alicia right. Keys, yeah. hey man, damn, hey come on man, come on Swiss, come on man. The long well, he can't home. do nothing. I mean, but in his defense, he can't really do anything because yeah, he yeah. wasn't there. Can't start no beef. Come on man, like Usher, Usher, that's yeah. that's fucked up, bro. And Usher gonna be like, that's why. I <laughs> oh damn, he's gonna pull a two. <laughs> he's gonna pull a two five. <laughs> Swiss, like uh, what? What you say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, but the food though for Super Bowl. Um, my wife had got some uh, Costco lasagna. Costco lasagna. Ooh. The lasagna from Costco. I don't know who sells it. I don't know the brand. There's a, the, I, when I had a Costco card, there, there's this, there, but dude, there's these ribs that are there. They're kind of like, you just take them out the packet, you put it in the, bro. You just heat them up? They're so good. Yeah. Mm. It's so good. I had them a few times and I was like, man, this thing is like crack for real. Mm -hmm. Might Damn. be the barbecue sauce. I was like, dude. Mm -hmm. Whatever barbecue sauce they use in it, you just take it out the packet thing and put it in the thing and just heat it up. And it's so good, bro. Wow. It's so good. It sounds good. good. It comes off the bone. Damn. It's so good. How long you got to keep it in the oven? Uh, whatever it says on the pack. I think. Okay. It's, yeah. It's so good. And then and then I think uh, all we have, the only kind of chips we had at home were like Doritos. And that Costco is like a big game changer for y'all. <laughs> I mean, because ever since ever since uh, Marisol got the got the little car, she can't stop. Like, yeah, I'm just trying car. to figure out if she's figuring out like, um, what what makes sense, like what things are gonna be like. That's those are that makes the cut. That's part of the list of what we actually get from Costco. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like for example, so far the big pack of the bacon that's like already cooked, basically. Yeah, yeah. That big pack comes in real handy because you might just grab a waffle, a boiled egg, and look some some bacon or whatever. Yeah. Call it a day. The kids like it, so that one looks like uh, obviously the big old thing of eggs because yeah. you know we go through eggs. Um, oh, well, like the five dozen ones. Yeah, like the oh, just damn. the big because we go through them. You'll, yeah, the kids are eating boiled eggs all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we have them now for this little menu snacks and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to make sure that she's not just like, like, oh, they gave me a sample of this mozzarella stick. Yeah. I bought, <laughs> I'm, I said, you know what? I'm going to test them out, see if the girls like them. They're good, huh? You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, oh shit. Now we're buying big body mozzarella sticks now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, cause you start to look at the price like, well, shit is we're just a little family of, uh, you know what I mean? It's yeah. just little girls and us two adults. Yeah. And I'm like, y'all ain't been eating beef. I'm like, hey, we got all that beef. You ain't seen those deals, bro. Sometimes those deals, they just get you. It gets you so bad. That's what H-E-B, they're so good at that, where it's just like, oh, if I get this, I get this. Oh, man, you know what? I'm going to buy this. I was trying to explain to my wife, because she's like, she's like, you know how normally at H-E-B, if you get the big thing of the chicken breast, it's around, she's like, you know, 12, 15. She's like, over here, I can get, it's like two of them. And she says the price. And I'm like, okay, well, what's price per pound? She's like, mm, I don't know. It's just... The one from HB is about this big, but the other one, I'm like, you need to compare the price per pound so that you actually know what rate you're actually paying. Right, because HB right, right. might have a whole bunch of packs of things, but it's my, one might be, they vary. One's 11, one's 14, one's 15. So it's like they weigh different and. Well, the thing is, is that she is, you know, she does, she has her own business. So sometimes she peeps game and she's like, sometimes she eyeball it. Some of that, it, that was good marketing. You know, what? I'm going to have to buy this. I'm going to have to buy it now. <laughs> it's like one of those things. I support this. I can support, you know what? I can, I can get behind this because the way that packaging. they sold it to me, I like it. The lady with the samples <laughs> was very nice. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's how, we're, hey, you're going to have to be doing the grocery shopping now. You're going to have to make sure, dog. <laughs> I, I mean, the, I mean, the only stuff that really, really, truly makes sense is stuff that's like, you're going to need a lot of it. Yeah. The other, like eggs and uh, paper towels. The other thing that's problematic for those places, because I don't know what it is about Costco's and Sam's, but they always got a freaking lit, like little concession stand in the front where it's oh, like, oh, yeah. that pizza and the hot dogs and the other. Like, dude, I haven't, that's, that's I haven't, bad. I haven't so. stepped into a Costco in about a year. But I hear that their pizza's good. It's, it, yeah, that stuff is like, it's, it's crack. That, that for real, for real, they're they, they putting all those 
everything, everything. addictive, a natural little addictive flavorings. natural flavorings in there to make you be like, man, you know what? Maybe I need two slices of pizza today. Uh, my boy Racheton brought up Costco pizza. When oh, we yeah? were eating in Corpus, which was at Mesquite downtown. Yeah, yeah. It was great, by the way. Because you normally when we do the shows, I don't normally eat the pizza. Do you do you get pizza? Mm -hmm. You do? I've had it before. Yeah. Okay, well, I think I've had it. That pizza is really good. It is. Uh, they they got that shit down to science, but Racheton was like, oh, hey, get the Supreme. It's like the Costco pizza. Uh -huh. And, uh, uh-huh. What's that? No, yeah, we've Well, had, these are we, Costco we, pants, too, by the way. Yeah, we had a, what, what is it? Uh, we had a margarita pizza there from there. That shit was, that, that yeah. went down quick, dude. You know, uh, Corpus Christi, that's like in November. Um, that's always a good time. And, uh, but dude, by November, bro, I'm going to have this crazy set. So much new stuff, so polished. Yeah, and then now we got a, even a system for your comedy set. Like, we we coming up with a weird little way to, like, crank out material quick now. Like, the way we're doing it. So like, we crammed we it needed, that one week. <laughs> well, we crammed it. Well, we crammed it because there's there a few stories you wanted to add yeah. last minute. So we had to really work brainstorm it. and then kind of work it out and then just go crank it out at the mics. But, like, just seeing the mics consistently here, because I, I guess I just had, like, a, you know, other mics that I've gone to in the past that just... There wasn't enough people or it's just weird like you just weren't getting anything from it yeah. even whenever i would do the jokes on stage i'm like i don't know if this I works well so i have to do room. this somewhere else like where i can at least get the wording that i want to say right or something because i wasn't getting anything from the from the mics but the ones here the mics here in houston are crazy good like i'm just like oh shit like oh, you, no, hadn't, really seen, good you hadn't really so seen those no like i saw i saw a few of them with with israel that one time a few times and then I was like, oh, maybe it was just like a crazy good night. And then we went out again. I'm like, bro, all these rooms get pretty good. Like, I'm just like, oh, they like there's people you can there. Get work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, all these rooms have been here long enough for it to have grown into like people just know comedy. They just there. know. And then they're also comedy savvy because some of them will let you talk. It's not just the bar. It's not just, you know what I mean? Like, these are all they're places like where they're like listening and like, oh, okay. And they're, you know, they're just comedy savvy here. So I was like, oh, shit, you could actually crank out a bunch of shit here. That uh, that up the right uh, upstairs Rudyard's, man. Yeah, that's I wonder, a good room too. I wonder what their bar looks like because like it's like they're when who was I there with? I think with Midnight and Luis, mm -hmm. and I think they're like, oh yeah, there's another show after us type thing. Like it, they were already sitting down some people. Yeah, they just have it down, so they probably got like a good like mailing list and stuff like that, and they probably just know who, who to who to advertise to and stuff like that. So that's. I mean, there's some legit spots here, dude. Like, every room that we've gone to has had, like, good sets of people. And it's just, like, open mic type shit, too. Like, where it's just like, oh, damn. What do y'all shows look like? This is nuts. Like, Yeah, even a concrete show at uh, Winters. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that was that, that was, was crazy, cool. dude. I had never been there. But, like, there was a lot of your friends in Pasadena. That's what, That was wild. Like, it was like, oh, shit. Hey, man, y'all know he's got a show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Houston Improv, February 23rd. And the 24th, um, rodeo, rodeo's upon us. I'm curious how Mighty Souls Valentine's event went today. It's just a lot of holidays. and Yeah, we running around. We trying to do, ooh, we got lots of stuff, doc. We got the- uh, <laughs> Tired just thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot Music, of admin stuff. Well, I'm knocking out features. It's just a lot of stuff that we're working up to and then just getting our rhythm down uh, where we're going more like- getting the sets right and everything like that just making sure the the whole tour runs smoothly and stuff so and then just making sure we tag everybody and all the stuff so they can see your they can see where you're gonna go like that's the other thing is like we don't want to just rely on other people's podcasts we want to be able to get you all the information so y'all make sure to text that 210 480 i think 8626 yeah <laughs> <laughs> that could be the uh you can remember it that could be the slogan yeah, 8626, yeah. 210 480 8626. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Hit Just, my number. I'm going to have a switch. flashing on the screen. I'll put something on there. Hit my number on the switch. Yeah. F a yeah. So, so y'all do that. Tell us what, what uh, city you're in, and we'll, we'll like, message y'all, like, like uh, when we're going to be in your town and stuff like that. That way you guys are, like, the first to know, and y'all can get your tickets, your pick of the litter on the tickets. So, mm -hmm. I think that's a good move yeah yeah for sure yeah i think i think it's great connection is everything and it reminds me of the kind of stuff like we used to do like back back in the day like you know what i mean where where that was your only option yeah you know? that's why that's why like I keep there was you. no mailchimp it was like we can get a cell phone and then we can put it on the flyer and say it on the mixtape and now you got this number yeah 
that's why I keep telling you, like, there's a lot of stuff you did back in the rap days for you, and like you can apply to comedy, and it's just it's insane how much, like, how much that like it, it correlates. That's that's the crazy part. Yeah, still in the yeah. game, still in the like game. You've already done it. You just got to redo it again. <laughs> The yeah, way, the way it's been set up, and if we get it flowing that way, everybody's gonna be like, "Oh shit, there you are." Which which reminds me, I need to see if like like are we gonna get a DJ for the Houston shows? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people are mentioning uh the cook off, but hey, this could be your cook off after party, your pre party, pull up. So um, so yeah, so today after this, we're gonna go hop on stage and uh, work out some stuff, hit these um. Be out here in the city, working the skills, hitting these jokes, hitting these jokes. Uh, also, in the gym, baby. Uh, you know, we might, we might also be doing some pop ups around town, like throughout the year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for Houston, sure. if you're in the Houston area, just, just keep it on Chingo's pages, guys. We're gonna be doing maybe some pop ups here and there, so you never know. We're gonna be doing a lot more in the city as well, just kind of getting everything kind of moving again because we we just really had to like figure out a bunch of stuff to get to this point to where we can be like, okay, cool. We're going to, what did he say it's up now? You know, we're going to start doing RPTs exclusively on Patreon only. So if you want to go see all the RPT episodes, that's where you're going to go. Yeah, Patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. And what did he said? We're going to start putting it here and probably on Facebook. We're sure. Start, so YouTube, both YouTube channels going to have the, what did he said? And then also we're going to have, uh, we're going to have it on Facebook. So because we can put the long forms on there. And so I think right now that's what we're going to do. We might make these episodes longer. It just depends. But more or less, guys, we're going to bring back what did he said. And it's going to be we're gonna, we're figuring it out. So we got more stuff coming. And let us know, too. If you, like if you, if you guys have any ideas like, oh, we like when y'all do y'all react to these kinds of things or uh, y'all should cover these kinds of topics or whatever you think. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right, y'all. Chingo Bling. Are we still friends tour next stop? H-Town, Houston, Texas. Uh, my boy Jesse Payton will be hosting. Uh, we got Javi Luna in the building. Of course, lots of surprises. Juan Perez, Tio Juventino. And we'll see y'all there. Let's get it.